Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the 25th installment of the State of Fae podcast. I'm your host, DTM, back from vacation. It is so great to be back alongside with my fellow co-hosts, of course. How are you two doing, Oblivion and Joel from Phaeology? I'm back. I'm happy. I also went on vacation, but I stayed <laughs> in my room. It was less exciting, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm yes. also back. Yeah, you went full I, I... neat mode, right? Like just... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> Stuck in FE se- uh, FF7 land, from what I right. recall. <laughs> yep, yep, 100%. <laughs> yeah. How is it faring, I, Joel, being all alone? I, you know, I, I've been preparing my my um, my cosplay for the Hero Rises summons that I have to do oh, because we reached a member goal. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> member goals are... Uh, yeah, they're very exciting, and if we can't wait to see. <laughs> I've heard some interesting tidbits. I can't wait to see uh, you display it for your members and I'm, the rest I'm, of the community. I'm, I'm very curious. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> right, so you don't even know the final product yet. It's still being developed, I see. No, the, the whole deal was that my, my wife was going to do the whole thing, and whatever she said went. So that's, uh, that's where I we're see. at. <laughs> Well, hopefully it ends up being amazing. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Or at very least entertaining. Um, <laughs> that, 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 that it will be, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what did I miss? What did I miss? Sorry, I, I won't say. But what did I miss since I left? I Why think the like, the, like the day that I started playing Final Fantasy and you went to Japan, they dropped the codes like that day. Like, it was like... <laughs> Yeah, like they're gone now. It's the perfect time. Like I don't even remember if it was like one day or two days or like literally the same day. But like, I remember being in like Tokyo and looking on my phone and be like, oh wow. Of course, when I left, like the biggest codes <laughs> update ever happened. <laughs> um, so yeah, act- it's like actually good codes too, which is the crazy part, right? Like if it was bad codes, like okay, whatever. But it's good codes. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, I want to talk about this. Yeah, so you're welcome, everyone. I'm the bearer <laughs> of good luck when I leave. Um, but yeah, they do, they are amazing. Like, I think each and every single path in the codes are like, have something of value for someone. Like, and really good value too. Uh, which manuals are you most excited for in particular? Uh, so I. I think what really matters is which which unit you have built up as a as a fodder factory, like mm-hmm. that's be, because they're so like there are definitely some highs and lows, but but the one that's going to be best for you is whoever you have already built up, and and for me that's Lucina, like the yep. the Fate's Awakening path is going to be yep. mine. It, that that is I cannot wait to finish that up and get my extra Lucina going. I, yeah, I completely agree because like for me Lucina is like. A thousand orbs worth of fodder, so I'm like, okay, <laughs> exactly. Three thousand orbs from some codes, I'll take that for sure. Uh, th- the fact that they put a rearmed hero at the end of every line, mm-hmm. like, th- my faith in them definitely boosted from that. Even though, like, it, it, well, I guess I should say, they didn't put crappy ones, right? Like, they don't have, no offense, Alfred and like Lyft there, which is like, <laughs> oh, thank God, like they actually put like, you know, Ingrid, Lucina, Tana, right? Like really, really good ones for the most part. So I- I'm very very happy with it. Yeah, like I did not expect rearms to be perfectly honest in any part of the codes. And like the great thing about it, which is something that I first learned about when these codes released was that if you like m- merge a manual into your uh, rearmed unit, like mm-hmm. that recharges the fodder use of the entire fodder stack to, that you have inherited on the rearms, which is just insane value like you mentioned a thousand orbs worth on your lucina i don't have my lucina invested like at all unfortunately (laughs) but like my ingrid is super invested and i would love to get a merge or an extra use off of that and yeah like honestly like did you expect to get rearms from the codes like coming into these release I thought we would, but I thought it would be like two, and I thought it would be Alfred and Lyft. <laughs> that's what, that's what, and I was like, right. like the you know what the point where it's like, okay. Version. I see. Like, yeah. you know, technically it's a rearmed, but like, is it mm-hmm. really a good rearmed? Not for most people. Right. 
I can't. I, I, I'm still in disbelief. Like this is <laughs> this is a great move, and the fact that this is better than anything we saw on the the <laughs> the anniversary channel. I mean, that, that's what really got me. <laughs> I, they they right. really buried the lead there. I mean, th- this is something to celebrate that they should have gone early with, and they they didn't. So that's that's interesting to me. But I, I, these are these are fantastic. And the, I mean, the thing we haven't really discussed here, we've been talking about the rearms. The other thing that's amazing is. Every single unit has something good, all the way down to the the yeah. early ones. Mm-hmm. Like they they did an excellent job with these. I'm amazed at their generosity. Absolutely amazed. Oh yeah, like the fact that you can go early coats and get value, right? Like just looking at it, you can get snap. Snap is an extremely rare skill still, and you get it for 1,200 coats, right? Like <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, that's insane. insane. <laughs> 1,200 coats, and you can get snap. And the cool thing is too is like not only are you getting really good fodder early. Any of this fodder you can invest into the rearm here, you're going to get later, and then you have a fodder factory ready now. You know what I mean? Like, you, right. they give you the fuel for the engine, which is cool. <laughs> that is an excellent way to put it, and you're it absolutely really is. right. Like, every unit has something of value. You get cancel control, I think, also at like 1200 mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. You get, I think, physical no follow up and magic no follow up in like the midway point. And, yep. like, that is insane. Like magical and physical no follow up is like, like, um, may, if not like best in slot beast for a lot of units, like second best in slot beast for a lot of units, and like having that there just does wonders to folks like me who you know don't really have a lot of orbs to spend on fodder, and now we can just use the codes for them. It will take a while. We all know how long it takes for codes to um, to uh. Accumulate. to pile up yes accumulate but overall like the fact that we can just like time grind for them is amazing yeah i, I think it's just really cool and the fact that a lot of the manuals are new heroes right like mm-hmm. some of them are like a month old or like you know when these came out so, like yeah. that's insane like dimitri's on there right dimitri's a very good unit and he just came out in december like it's yeah. like okay. yeah, like less like, than four months ago like that's right. crazy I'm, I'm very, very, very pleased. And there's like, the only thing that I think is missing from the codes, which I'm not like, you know, I'm not being uh, mm-hmm. mad about that, is like the Assassin's Strike and like Occultist Strike and like Flared Sparrow, right? Like pretty much every other right. meta skill is in that code, which is really good. Right. And uh, yeah, yeah they, uh, they skipped the burn damage. And the, the one, it, I understand that. The one that I would have really liked is Assault Troop. Mm. I, I think that's a fun one that could have been on here, and and it isn't. I, again, like we've been saying, it's tough to complain about this right. because this is really good. But assault troop is one of those skills that I don't think breaks the game, and I think is really fun to put on your favorite yeah. armor. So I, mm-hmm. I would have liked to see that one. And that's like a merge for Summer Altina. So I would definitely right. <laughs> also a merge. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was about to ask, like, who is assault troop on? Like, is it just uh, Summer Edelgard, or because that's all I uh, remember having. Uh, I believe so. Oh, it is. Never mind. You're right. Yeah, Zelgius has. Oh, Zelgius. Okay, no wonder why I forgot. He was irrelevant. No, just kidding. Wow. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay, but like uh, having a salt troop on Winter Zelgius was just like out of nowhere. Random. Let's be real. Yeah, it's random. It's completely (laughs) random. I don't know what they were thinking with this whole kit. Like, they're like, defense res solo. That's what he needs. I'm like, but he has Black Luna. Like, just give him that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Anyways, uh, we, we won't talk too much about Zelgius, um, but mm-hmm. like, <laughs> do you have, what are like your current plans for these codes? Like, is there a, like one you want to get first and like, do you have any projects with some of them you're thinking about? I'm, uh, I'm immediately going for Snap. And the reason for that is because uh, another thing we'll be discussing in a little bit is the Hero Rises and we have Peony coming yes. up. And Peony is like one of the best units you could possibly duplicate Snap with. And so she's going to just, every copy is going to be a snap copy from her. So I'm going for snap as, as quick as possible. And then I'm going to just give up to every flyer ever. Uh, Altina's getting it. I'm going to give her no quarter. And Marth Ring, it's going to be great. I, weirdly enough, Rebecca for me. <laughs> for attack speed finish three, right? Yeah, I, I've, been, I've been meaning to update my my crom, my dual crom. And mm. I've got, I, I've got a, a, a fear. And so, I yeah, that... Between the two of them, completely updates his kit and makes him relevant in 
you know, arena even more than he is, I guess. I, he's kind of mid-relevant right now, but because of the reposition. Anyway, yeah, you get my, you right, get my right, point. Right, right, right. I guess I could have, like, waited to get, like, Attack Speed Finish 3 before inheriting, like, my fear on Legendary Chrome. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's fine. Like, I was going to use Oath for anyways. Um, but yeah, having that bridge fodder is really, really nice. Um, for me, like, my plants, I really, really want the Attack Speed Far Save that's on the mm-hmm. Awakening Fates path on Corrin. Um, for my Valentine's Lucina, it will take 4,000 coats, I believe. Um, so it's going to take a while, but... Hey, there's already 400 stockpiled, so it can't be too <laughs> long, right? Yeah. The thing is, too, now, like, the kind of funny thing is that the codes are worth so much now, I feel like maybe I should be merging up a harmonic, which is, like, exactly what IS wants me to be thinking. So I'm like, huh, <laughs> <laughs> their trick is working. Yeah. Yes, I, at the end, it, it's all part of IS's plans to <laughs> milk the whales. Or, um, or the worst part, maybe you should be building Milner strike teams. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> no, nope. I'm not at that point yet. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be a long while before I actually put thought into Milner strike teams. I'm just gonna say that right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, we mentioned this um, a little bit briefly. You did Oblivion, but you're right that you know Peony did win a hero rises that is something that also happened while i was on vacation again literally the best case scenario you're welcome fate fate community (laughs) (laughs) every time i leave like there's a banger the co's hr what are your thoughts on peony uh being able to not only pull the upset on edelgard but winning I'm going to jump in here and obviously, you know, I, I, I yeah. want to be all like, like happy and all that. But let's talk about the fact that I keep on seeing uh, <laughs> uh, uh, everywhere about how the Fey tubers kind of rigged this all up. <laughs> and what an absolute <laughs> fluke it was that we got a full green dream. Like I, oh, Peony man. was, I, what was she? She was like one for two. Like Edelgard was winning two for every one that she did. So, I mean, it, it really just absolute dumb luck and I, all of them actually I, I think three of the three of the four they, they shouldn't have won and that they did right it was bizarre like uh dimitri i was on team dimitri and like i was like well this is over now i'm sad so i dropped my 800 and like come back and then all of a sudden i go back to click on it and it's like 500 feathers for victory and i'm like he did it he beat the snake the <laughs> snake is dead yeah <laughs> i was on team peony like satoshi was also so like we both don't really care for more Winter Edelgard merges. I mean, Satoshi has plus 10, so like it makes sense for him. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, the only Attune slash Rearm, like, we have to support Peony, and even if you don't care about the Green Dream. And on the Peony side, like, it was probably one of the most coordinated um, efforts I've seen. Like, we have <laughs> Green Dreams in the past with, I believe it was like Ninjorn, Azura, um, Byleth and some other Thor. unit. Thor, yes, yes. Um, I didn't get a single Thor. That's why I forgot about her. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, I don't know, like it was really locked in, like reading all the forms, like people hold off on all the um, flags until the very end. And it was won by like, I think two billion or something. It was really I mean- amazing to see. Oh, it was crazy. I, I I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I mean, when you get the power of Elgard haters and Peony, <laughs> like it's, it's a powerful force. For once, I will form an alliance, a truce, if you will, <laughs> towards them. <laughs> That's why Dimitri's was so close, because all the Dimitri fans who also hate Elgard were like, Dimitri got this, we're going to go join the Peony game. <laughs> Speaking to the other results, um, mm-hmm. we do have Alir winning over Sonaki. And yeah. I do know that there were some mixed feelings about that one. Some were really happy about it. Some obviously were really sad because Sonaki is a really amazing unit. Um, what's the result of Alir winning your preference? I think the thing is, right, like when you look at the, the math, like her being a green is the only reason why I want Alir there, really, because it just <laughs> helps the rate so much. 
But mm-hmm. when it comes to the actual unit, like the funny thing was, is that like she got power crept like as she won a hero or as she won her like go, like a uh, round, right? Like it was like, oh, she won, cool. We're gonna have a good army thing. And then here comes Maelir who just does everything she does but better. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well now I feel kind of bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> I I don't put that a point against it because like you can't really predict that. Like obviously oh, no, no one no, really no. knew about it going. Um, but yeah, it is really funny that it worked out that way, especially since, you know, they probably had a Lear, male Lear, planned out like six months in advance or something. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was really funny that it happened. What would you do? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't feel either way about a Lear. Like, I, I, I don't mind that she's up there and I would like to get merges on her. I, I think from just summoning on banners that she was on, and looking mm-hmm. for other characters, I have her up to plus five, I think. So Bam. my my best merged up fire legendary is unfortunately legendary Xander, which happened on accident. Aww. And <laughs> he's, he's yeah. terrible. It, okay. I, however bad you think he is, he's worse. <laughs> like that's yep. really. Well, so, hopefully you get yeah. a bunch of Aaliyahs on your HR summon soon, because yeah. We want to relieve you of that fate as soon as possible. Um, uh, uh, Aaliyahs and peonies, just just send them all my way. Yep. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, I do think the fodder she has is really, really good. Like, the only yeah. other source of pledge is the aforementioned uh, male Aaliyah that's on a legendary banner. Um, and I guess now Sita, but that's like defense res pledge. Um, so for like speed units, obviously they want attack speed pledge, and of course attack speed finish, and no C disrupt, which is still really, really good to this day. So at the very least on the fodder side, it's really good. Um, we do have to talk about the other unit that won. Oh man. Over, and that is the one that quote unquote did not matter uh, for the green dream. It was Claude versus Camilla, and Claude <laughs> did win <laughs> to the I'm consternation of Manny. <laughs> yeah, it was so disappointing. Like the difference between getting Camilla on that banner and Claude is like so massive. Like yeah. Camilla is just so good. She's a legendary, so you're getting guaranteed value from that for arena at least. Her fodder is not great. I'm not gonna lie, but like her as a unit, like it's just so much better than Claude. And I was like, Ugh, Claude won. Like really? Like, come on, man. Like it definitely puts like the dud on the banner in my opinion, uh, where it won't feel as good getting him. I mean, you still get Prime at least, but like Camilla, man, getting a plus to Camilla would be really nice. And there's the secret agenda, right? The secret agenda is if Camilla <laughs> would have won, burn burn damage would have been nerfed. And that's what we all really want. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, very true. I, there was a there was someone on Twitter who really hated the Green Deer in the first place. And it, I, I think they <laughs> threw up at a meme like, you won, but at what cost? And that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not wrong <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, mean, too, I, 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 I was with that I, I really wanted Camilla to win like the two units that I absolutely wanted on there were Camilla and Peony right and unfortunately you only got the one um, yeah I felt the same way I would have really loved Camilla since, especially since I don't have her um, at least for Claude the fodder is nice you mentioned like attack speed prime is really good we have two sources of attack speed prime for now <laughs> on the banner so yep. what are the odds of getting like attack speed prime for like is it it's like six percent or something like that i would imagine like just it's, it's pretty good yeah yeah um it, like it's pretty good and it's even funnier that it gets power crept right before we hit the banner did it get power that's, crept that's, i don't think so i don't really, the, I'm i think not, the bonus guess, doublers one's be, one is better I'm not really a big fan, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we can talk about the bonus DC doubler um, soon. But yeah, it it is funny that we did get another source of DC or close counter with the release of the HR that's coming soon. Um, but yeah, uh, I I still think attack speed prime four is valuable and honestly better than a lot of the DC options we have, like plus nine to attack and speed. Like there currently isn't another um, DC skill that can match that. And so, yeah, I, I personally really like attack speed prep. I'm probably going to try to get one for probably Lucina or oh, uh, Valentine's Lucina because I'm still mad. I did not get either <laughs> distant dart or 
prime <laughs> on her a- HLF. Like, I'm still mad about that. But yeah. Um, so obviously Peony won. Um, you both have relatively invested peonies, I believe, right? Actually, I don't have any investment in, at all in mine. I have a single oh. <laughs> copy, and that's it. Uh, but I have stuff to put on her, obviously. So I'll do that once I get more copies. Mm, uh, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to give her everything. So she's going to have, like, no quarter, guidance, soaring guidance, snap. Everything you could want on her, she's going to have. My, mine already has everything you could want on her and, and more. It, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> I, I have a lot of crap on mine. <laughs> so I, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to this. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't gotten even a single peony, so I'm hoping to be able to get a bunch because if I can get like Lom 4 on her and then mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. inherit that to literally everything, um, that would be insane for my Gale Force. I'll finally upgrade to the pay to win Lom 4 strats of Gale Force. It'll be amazing. <laughs> At DTM, it will change your world. <laughs> like, it's, it's that good. I, I just, that, that's all I can say. It is absolutely amazing. I cannot believe how powerful that skill is. Yeah. I'm, I'm still I, in the like middle ground where I only have one WAM4 user on my Gear Force teams, which is like the fairy. So, like, it's really nice for them, but everybody else is still like in budget town. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I need more sources of WOM for basically. That's the <laughs> that's the lesson for today. Um, and yeah, we did mention this briefly, but we did get new bonus doubler counter skills in the new Arcanea banner. Um, we have like Sita, we have Arlen, we have Merrick, we have someone I forgot the name of. I can't be bothered to Google right now. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I and, oh, yeah. Yulia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yulia. Yeah, but it okay. felt weird. Whew, yeah. That was going to kill me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not the biggest fan of this banner, personally. Are, mm-hmm. are any of you two fans of this banner, unit or character-wise? I, I'm like more leaning towards your way, where I, I think they're good, but I don't think they're like amazing. That's where I'm at. I've definitely seen other people go like completely, like, these are the best units ever. Or like, at least she does. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. Right. I'm not completely... For me, like the thing is like, right? Like when you, when you're a new unit, typically that's when you're at your best, right? There are, mm-hmm. you know, some outliers like Brave Hector or like even like legendary Dimitri who got better in time with either refiner skills. That's typically not the case. And my problem with Sheeta is just that she's coming into a meta where arguably the most powerful unit in the game is like a green unit with like a sweep effect. <laughs> so like, it's like a really tough place to be and obviously she, you know, there are ways to make her survive, but like, I just don't like being at a detriment at the beginning of your life, essentially, I guess is the best way to put it. Have you gotten to play with her yet? I play with her a little bit. Like she can definitely live, but like, I haven't got her to kill Leon. Maybe that's just cause my Leon's pretty built. I don't know. But um, she usually just takes a whole bunch of damage. He lives and then he either gets danced and kills something else or kills her. And then I'm like, okay. She's, yeah, and I mean, like, uh, you have to like pretty much like well, outres him, right? Which is not the easiest thing to do if like you're up against uh, <laughs> a good Leon. Yeah, I I've been having a blast with her. I I've got a I, I sparked a copy, so she's just plus zero. But I I I think she's a fantastic unit. But I I also think I most of the time your goal is to keep away from Leon no matter what your tank is. <laughs> so I, after all, Tina. <laughs> I'm uh, Altina. I just throw Altina right in front of him, and she cannot do anything. Yeah, he can't do anything because she just outreses him. And he's like, "What's up?" And he's like, "Okay, there's 20 percent burn damage, and now you're dead." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that is true. <laughs> Altina secretly but, the best unit in the game? Question mark? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> to be like completely fair though, like I don't. I'm not saying she's bad. I don't think she's bad at all. Right? I think she's probably like top three. Omni tanks, top four maybe at the worst, right? Like she's very, very good. Um, it's just that there's so many. They have been throwing Omni tanks at us recently again. It's kind of like last year, the beginning of last year, where we've gotten like you know the refine for Legendary Team Corn. We got Altina, we got Sheeta, and now Legendary Male Lear as well. And so I feel like I don't know if you already have one of those, do you really need another one? Like that's it's the exact same thing as last year essentially. <laughs> it's 
it's so funny because our ranking of the unit is exactly the same, but I'm happy about the unit and you're not happy with the <laughs> unit. <laughs> I, it, yeah. It's not that it's, I'm unhappy with her, it's just that I have an alternative that she's really, really strong, so I don't feel like yeah, I need her, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it's I, like, I mean, what's the term? Yeah. Aggressive agreement or like something like that. <laughs> that we Violent you're agreement. Right. Yeah. 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 You're right. <laughs> I mean, on my end, I, I think I lean more towards the Oblivion perspective in terms of Sita. Like, obviously, I'm more, um, uh, I guess, holding back when it comes to uh, evaluating these units and... I, I do agree, like, Sita as an Omni tank um, faces some really interesting matchups, to say the least, and in a meta where, like, there is a lot of nuking power, um, like, C Omni tanks would definitely need to have a lot in order to justify either replacing your current Omni tank or running an Omni tank at all versus another team like Gale Force or Hit and Run, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. um, in an Ether 8's context, in Summer's duels, there are Omni tank teams. Uh, we have legendary male Alir teams that just apparently tank everything, and I can't kill them, and I hate them. <laughs> um, <laughs> you need a green. Apparently, I do. <laughs> at least some something better than past dual crom to be able to cut through uh, yes. a lot of the tankiness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I showed you guys that replay, but I ran into like a Leviathan with like plus 10 Legendary Male Leer, plus 10 Leon, like plus 10 everything new, right? And I just took a green, didn't even duo skill her, or harmonic skill, and I just took out their Male Leer when they threw him, threw him at me, first turn, and then I killed their whole team, like essentially, there's two units left. <laughs> and I was just like, Man, that feels like like pay to win just got like wrecked right there. <laughs> like, <laughs> got destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I, I I had a replay with Tacho that I I, I ran into him in the uh, in the last SDR, and that was it, it was similar to where he had his uh his legendary Millilier and his wasn't plus ten obviously, but I mm -hmm. I just agreed him and that was that was it. Yep. Yep. Do you know? He's strong. Do you know which tank takes on I green? Valentine's Lucina. Let's oh. go. <laughs> I was like, oh, Tina. <laughs> no, 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 in all seriousness, though, like, my Valentine's Lucina, like, survives literally every single I green, except for that one very weird solid ground plus 10 I green that was super, super weird. <laughs> um, but that still only did, like, one damage. But that was enough, apparently. Uh, but no, like, I greens, like, I greens would do the AoE, and then they would try to attack normally. But, like, they would literally do zero damage to Valentine's Lucina thanks to the Aegis Hardy Fighter. It's amazing to witness, honestly. The, um, the great thing about a green is not actually that a green is good. Although she is, but is <laughs> how perfectly she complements uh, Leon. Yeah. And, and so th teams. that's yeah. that's the thing when you're when, yeah. when you're one of the Cavline teams, those two work so well together. And by well yeah. together, I mean, you know, helping destroy the mode, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Do a really does good I... job of killing everything. <laughs> does does green have an open C slot, or is that where her perf is? I can't remember. Uh, uh, kind of an open C slot. You kind of need yeah. it because that's where uh, the, the it, what is it? Pulse? Pulse uh, up. Pulse. Yeah. Pulse yeah. up special blades or right. something like that. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay, now I remember. I was about to ask, like, maybe maybe she's, like, the cancel control user on those, like, FX pastas that I've been seeing about. Um, I have seen that before. I've seen people do that. They just have, like, some kind of other way to charge her. Right, right, right. Um, anyways, in a meta with all of that, like, bringing it back to Sita, it is going to be very difficult to survive, like, AoEs, burn damage, uh, damage having, damage reduction having, damage reduction piercing. Um, there's a lot of tools that Sita has to deal with, but you know what helps with that? Uh, she comes with Guard Echo, which, you know, completely <laughs> changes the meta for Omni -tanks. I like it. I honestly like it a lot. I think it's really cool. I'm glad that we actually got a Echo skill that's not trash for tanks, because, like, it's been so <laughs> yeah. long, right? We had, like, Death Blow mm -hmm. 2 and Oath Echo, like, oh, I'm not running that. Like, that's not gonna do anything. So right. I actually like it quite a bit. I think for Sheeta, like, she actually has so much stuff in her kit, like, it's kind of ridiculous. It's just that she has, like, the opposite things of, like, Altina and Maelir, where, like, they have Scowl and Brave, she, mm -hmm. and they can run NCD, and she can't do that, right? It says she right. has, like, Unity and, like, flat DR and stuff like that. 
And so I think it's like an interesting place to be. And I think if they add in an emblem ring, which we'll probably talk about later on, but they add in one <laughs> that does that removes like burn damage, I think she's in a great place. Or I think like imagine if the Ike ring gave NCD and no burn damage. Broken. <laughs> Do it, I right, we have the uh, we have the oblivion hopium coming out in full force. Hundred percent, always. <laughs> but yeah. I, okay, um, okay. To your point, real quick though, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it feels like NCD is coming out in some other form soon. It, I, it just it, it, it really to. feels like it. <laughs> They need to nerf Leon. If they don't, like, I, this is coming from a Leon simp, right? He's one of my favorite characters in all of the series. He needs to get nerfed. They need to get rid of burn damage, or they, and they need to get out NCD. If you put out both those things, Leon falls apart. Like, he's not useless anymore, but he drops back into, like, lying with other units. So, like, I feel like they're going to do that, right? Like, it has to happen at some point. I have a feeling they might be cooking up something, especially with the a lot of the Omni tanks that we've gotten. Uh, recently mm-hmm. um yeah. but yeah but hey you know right now like in SES there are folks that are planning three cav lines thanks to Arlen which has also <laughs> released on this banner I, I don't know I've seen him oh, highly man. rated I don't know he just seems like I agree at home to me like is that the same impression or am I just crazy I, I mean I think he he's the same thing as Katie and Lynn to me, essentially, right? Because like in a majority of situations, if you don't invest in the Katie and Lynn, she is just there to like provide her buffs and to mm-hmm. chill. Like maybe <laughs> she kills like a straggler or something like that, but that's pretty much it, right? Or maybe she repositions. And so mm-hmm. Arlen being able to do the exact same thing essentially, but also provide cancer control is a decent trade-off. Like it's not terrible. Like it's, you know, obviously you lose one movement, but like, it's not the end of the world. And so I can understand with Cavs being as strong as they are, running three Cav teams is just, it's toxic, disgusting trash. So why would people not do it? I I, I hear you, but you're, you're saying loses one movement. And that's that's one of the key pieces to Cav lines. I mean, that's that's not a small thing. I, I, I understand that it's SDS and you know that the teams aren't gonna be your absolute strongest, mm-hmm. but but still like that's losing one movement is 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 not insignificant. It's it's not, but I think the thing is is like with Lind even, right? Like typically with Lind, you're not really using her to engage the enemy in any way. Most of the time you're just using her as an opening like reposition bot or something like that. And he can run like Oath Echo and then he can he can do a similar opening as she can. And because he's the cancer control unit, you really don't want him in the front line anyway, because you want him to <laughs> make sure that the other calf lines you're fighting against get stopped. So I, I don't think he's amazing, right? I don't think he's like a game yeah. changer. I think Dagger is actually much, much better than he is. And he, she does a similar thing to him, essentially, where right. she's providing, instead of providing like the terrain ignoring, she's providing Pathfinder twice, which is way better in my opinion. And you get cancer control. So I think like, Mythic Dagger is just like absolutely bonkers right now, which is I guess a completely different subject, but like they have similar roles. And how did that happen? <laughs> well, I, I I don't even I, I have oh, I, I have a plus ten dogger and I love too. my dogger. Like I floretted I her. I, I didn't I love, <laughs> love my dogger. Uh, I, I, I use her every season. I have all kinds of builds on her. I had no expectations for that refine. I, oh, I honestly, absolutely not. I was like, maybe they'll give me slaying. And they didn't give me that, <laughs> but they gave me everything else. So I'm like, well, I, all right. I mean, okay. Right. It's like you yeah. didn't get the scooter you wanted for Christmas, but they gave you a car. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> okay. Exactly. I, I, I guess I'll take this. It's like, man, I really want that scooter. But no, like, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel exactly the same way. Like, it's like, it's insane. Like, I have a plus 10 dagger, and I'm in the opposite situation where she was like the, the stepchild everyone forgets about. I hated her. I was like, you're here, but <laughs> you're not really part of the family. Like, get out of here. Um, but now I'm like, oh, you're my favorite child. Like, come over here. Like, you're, you're, you're going to all the events. We're going to amusement parks. Um, because she is amazing. <laughs> she is so good. Like, I used her in uh, SDR because she was a bonus unit. So I was like, why not? And she was just so good. Having Kanto control on a full Cav team against another Cav team is a massive advantage. It's so yes. ridiculously big. Like, it allows you to do so much more and play so much more aggressively. Like, especially when, because with Cav lines, you really have to understand trading. And so being mm-hmm. able to trade aggressively and force it on your opponent feels so good. So I'm like, I got Wind Dagger. I got Duo Dagger. I got Base Dagger. Like, let's go. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> the biggest dagger fan. Let's go. <laughs> yep. She's she's so good. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm honestly stunned that her refine is as good as it is. Like that refine batch, it was literally just dagger. Like no one else in that batch, let's be real, like was all that great. Oh, and it doesn't man. even compare to dagger. Um and yeah, I think Makai like, is actually really good though. To be fair, I think like honestly, the fact that they turned her into like like a different version of Yoon, I think that's pretty big. I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. it, the, it, it's it's the space though, right? Like the having another Pathfinder unit, there's not that many of them. Having right. another oh, great yeah. nuke, there's a lot of them. Right. But so I feel it, like it's. I feel yeah, like she's ahead. not really like like she's a good nuke, but I feel like the thing that she's really providing is. Uh, like the Yoon debuffs, right? And like, I think that's yeah. a big deal because we're out of the Unity meta essentially right now. So like, Yoon actually got better again, which I think people have kind of forgotten how good she was before <laughs> Robin came out and Peony. Yeah. Um, but the fact that it's not panic and it's sabotage means you're always getting value on it. Like even if they aren't running visible buffs, you're still getting that value. And you also get a duo skill. And the duo skill, you know, obviously it's not the easiest thing to use, but it's a button. And that's all you really care about is that it's a button. So I, th I think she's like legitimately pretty good. Well, I'm still around Unity, so I welcome all these debuffs that are <laughs> going on. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> like I'm stubborn. Okay, I only change my teams if I need to. Um, oh man, D DTM's like the old man who has the closet of clothes that finally <laughs> comes back in style again. He's like, see, I'm on top of the meta now. <laughs> oh man. I mean, we talked a lot about Dagger on SC, but how do you think she does on ARO? Is like, what teams do you think like? especially suits her in Etherate's offense with a Pathfinder. I mean, Hit and Run probably is her best team, just because, like, double Pathfinder, like, makes it so that it's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I still have been using her just the same way I was using her before, which was just Gale Force. <laughs> like, I, honestly, yeah. did, she didn't really get all that much better at Gale Force. She, got, she definitely did get better, but the fact that most of the things you want are in her B slot kind of sucks. Because um, right. you're running Wing, Wings of Mercy 4 or 3 or whatever, so... There's that, but like, I mean, I'm just glad to have a better light mythic instead of having to like carry around dead weight essentially most of the time. <laughs> I feel that so um, much. I, I think definitely hit and run, but I, I I'm same way. I use her at Gale Force. Um, I she really she hits pretty hard, mm -hmm. so yeah. I just I throw one four on her and she goes to town. Yep, yep, definitely. Uh, the other thing with with light season is there are so many infantry mythics. That yes. if you get a infantry pulse four on her, then I mean it, the the chain of giving just is fantastic. Which is easier to do with the coats now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we have was it two sources of IP four in the coats? Yeah, insane, yep. honestly, yep. <laughs> and they're early too. Mm hmm. Yeah. I guess the coats are the gift that keeps on giving this year. Yes. Um, I do want to. Uh, mention one thing before we move on to a different topic and that is like we did mention the bonus doubler counter right. skills yeah, yeah. that was introduced on the Arcanea banner and I know we had previously discussed I think 20 minutes earlier uh, our mixed opinions <laughs> on those so I guess to uh, sound off uh, what are your thoughts on these bonus doubler skills and do you think they're better than the alternatives we have currently? All right, Joel, I'm gonna start off with first? this one. Yeah, Cause you're, you're yeah, positive. Go <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna make a statement and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Cause I think, <laughs> I, I think I know the difference here. And cause we've talked about this. I don't believe we're in a speed meta anymore. Mm. And you mm. guys still think it's a very important, you still got, you guys still have it ranked higher than I do. And so right. I think that's the big thing is I, so right now I think the most of the meta units aren't reliant on speed. And so you need different stats. And th the fact that it gives you a spectrum of stats, I think is very, very good. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, like a consistent plus six across the board, right? Is typically better than like, if you just add the stats up, right? That's 24 stats compared to like 18, which I think it, it's good that my problem with it is the condition, right? The condition of having an ally within two spaces. Cause that's the way you get around like dull and lull effects. Mm -hmm. I really don't like having a unit within two spaces almost ever now. Um, like 
it's just so brutal with like Sonicky and like just other units coming around where I when I play my Altina team there's always a unit three spaces away that's how I do it now and that's why I actually oh god I'm about to say this I hate I don't want to say this but I'm going to uh this is why I love Hidden Hortensia now like she's such a good unit yeah. <laughs> like uh, clip it I ship can, it everyone clip uh, it and ship it right now I hate it, it here I hate first. it so much she's so she, good she is so good it, yes okay it, okay for for Omni Tanks yes yes is for she the best support in the game um, yeah, I think like for me, it's like her and then Gatekeeper, which also just sounds terrible to say. But, like that's <laughs> right? what I, I use Gatekeeper <laughs> and her. Um, and the thing is, like, I can have Hortensia three spaces away from Altina to make sure that the finish still activates, and she gets the buffs. And then Gatekeeper's even farther away, and he's still giving his buffs. And yeah. so it just makes it so that like Altina takes zero damage almost every combat, other than the burn damage. And so it's like, and she just heals like twenty one per per attack. So I'm like, okay, this is great. Like, there's no way she's dying. Um, I I whiffed on her. I, I didn't get a Hortensia, so I that was oh yeah Ooh, yeah. She's she's really really good. Yeah. She's really good in SD too. Like yeah, she's actually ridiculous in SD as well. Um, so it, it's very nice because like you don't really need to run like you can still run Elliewood and he still does a great job. But like Hortensia offers similar things and more. So like I and you don't have to run a, a beast or a dragon or beast unit. So that's also nice yes. for Altina at least. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's just that's really 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 nice. She is. So when it comes to bonus doubler though, like the the two space condition, I don't like because like one Sonic Key activates right. Anyone else who has that effect, which is more and more units, um, activates. Also, like sometimes depending on the enemy team, it's not always easy to have a unit within two spaces that won't get sniped. So there's that. Like with Altina, you get the bulwark, so it's pretty nice. Same with Mal uh, Lear, I guess. But like with Sheeta, you don't get that, so that's something to be a little bit worried about. And so for me, I just don't like the two condition space almost ever. It's the same reason why I'm so down on Brave Marth. And I know that obviously the whole <laughs> Bayology Discord will attack me for that. Yep. But, probably, um, <laughs> yeah. That's. <laughs> but having a unit within two spaces to activate your effects, I just do not like. And so if I can avoid that, I will always avoid that if possible. I mean, for me, like, I think I'm on the same train as, like, Oblivion on the bonus doubler worth. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of bonus doubler as a skill effect. I love it as like a buff uh, or like a positive status effect. Um, but like bonus doubler being able to be circumvented by low all, unle dull all, unless you are within two spaces. Um, like two spaces <laughs> is a pretty restrictive condition nowadays. Like, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, but oh, like, 100% it's true. Is. <laughs> I remember when adjacency requirements were the restrictive one. Um, but anyways. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> or solo. Solo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I usually, for my tanking strats, I usually have someone within two spaces anyway, just for the extra, whatever support they have. I don't have a whole lot of mm. people who have the uh, the three space thing. Mm. You know, I, I was stupid and didn't get Hortensia, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to remedy that when she's back around. Is she still on, or has the banner left already? I can't remember. Uh, I think the banner left the day after I realized I really needed one of her, so... <laughs> <laughs> As it does. Yeah. As it does. The classic. Um, but yeah, like, I'm not saying, like, the bonus doubler counter skills are, like, bad or anyway. Like, no, I do yeah. think it is, like a pretty good like alternative. There are pros and cons. It's more of like a side grade than like a direct upgrade in my opinion. Um, or like, or a downgrade. Um, but yeah, like not the, not something I would personally like go out of my way to summon for. Especially considering like Prime works for both close and distant while obviously the bonus doubler DC ones are like separated. And so I was, yeah, yeah I was a bit disappointed wise. by that because I thought they were like finally moving on from that, and then they didn't. So I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. Like, it was really right. nice that they worked for both. I, I think the other thing too is like you have to, not only you have to buff your main tank with bonus doubler, but you also have to buff mm -hmm. the unit within two spaces, right? So that's two things yep. you have to consider. Now there are obviously units who can do that very easily, but then you have to run those units. So I'm like, uh, or you have to build your team in such a way that you can activate tactics on both of them, which is not always possible. Right. Um, but still, it's still a good option for mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the less speed-based uh, tanks that are out there, which we have seen a lot of 
recently. Um, thanks again to the rise of Hortensia, the best unit on that Elusia banner. Oh my! God. I just want to <laughs> say, I mean, it's true. <clears throat> I called it on my reaction. I said that she was insane, and I was right. So I'm gonna take this moment to gloat. Um, I got Oblivion <laughs> to my side. It's been amazing out here. Oh my gosh! I think we have to also talk about the ascendant florette on the banner too, right? Like that florette. Oh amazing. yes, the florette. It's finally we got another one. It's amazing. I think his name is Merrick, but I, I just call him Florette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I've literally seen like zero discussion on Merrick besides the Florette. Like, I think that's how much he's I mean, worth. He's, like, or... he's a good unit. Like he's a good yeah. unit. It's just that like your competition is Duo Leon right now. Duo Leon's blowing you out the water. Like it's not even close. I, yeah, I think the cool like... thing is, is like, go ahead. No, no, you finish, you finish. Okay. I think the cool thing is, is like he can run Desperation really for really well because he has like the special jump before every attack. Mm. So he can double special kind of like Tiara can, which I think is really cool. It's just that like, um, is that enough, right? <laughs> which is right. kind of crazy to say, but that's where we're at right now. Yeah, because like he's an infantry nuke, I believe. Um, no, no, he face he's, he's, a, he, he's a calf. He's a calf. Yeah. Oh, he's a calf. Okay. He's yeah. direct one for one, yeah. Okay, never mind. This is how much I paid attention to him. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, if you're a green calf, like, and you have, like, the competition is Leon, not even Leon, just Leon, like, you have, like, Camilla as, like, a nuke that you can run with charge. You can have, um, like, uh, yeah, there's just not really a good place for him. Like, we mentioned this plenty of times, but you can't just nuke. Um, you have to nuke and do something else generally. There are exceptions, of course, but in general, that is the case. Unless you're like literally the best of the best um, when it comes to summoner's duels. I think the funniest thing is, is that there actually, I think there is a place for him now, and it's because of Arlen. <laughs> Since Arlen <laughs> opens up that third cap team, now you're just like, I need like one more cap nuke. And you're like, oh, I guess Merrick works, and you could just put him in there. So, like, it's kind of funny because you want like 12 calves or more, like, that are really good. And range caps obviously make that a lot easier too. So like, I think he has a spot. I just don't think it's like, he's not your top choice, right? He's like the, right, the right. last kid you pick at like the the kickball. <laughs> thing. Like, okay, come yeah. on, Merrick. But yeah. is is he the third best cav nuke? I mean, that, that's that's I, I haven't I, gotten to play with him yet, so I, I don't I don't, I don't even know is. that. I, I think I like you knock him more than him. Like mm -hmm. honestly, yeah. Um, like Leon Sonicky. Um, Yunaka, I think, are all I, better. I guess we can count, like, I green. I green. <laughs> I um, count it green. Yeah. <laughs> Honorary calf. Yeah. We have yeah. melee calves, too. Like, yeah. like Brave Krom, for instance, that we could mm -hmm. put in. Um, you can Kagero. Sit Kagero. Citrine, if you run her with uh, I green, theoretically. Um, right. Reinhardt. Reinhardt <laughs> with magic <laughs> <in> turn. <laughs> yep. Reinhardt's actually not bad. Like it's kind of funny. You have to like kind of like jump through some hoops, but he can mm -hmm. he can put it in work. I, I think it's funny. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but he's better with the other yes. the yes. other yes. Yes. He is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like way better. <laughs> which is just hilarious. Yeah. Gotta summon a plumeria to get him truly to shine. <laughs> Stack that uh true damage. Exactly. Um, but yeah, like Merrick, I, I think she's just sort of like another range cav nuke. I don't think he's really honestly that special. Again, what is special is Hortensia and the Elusia banner that we just got. <laughs> <laughs> so, that Elusia banner, um, how, how was it? <laughs> what are your overall thoughts on that banner? Like, obviously, we uh, talked about Hortensia a bunch. Um, right. We did have Ivy <clears throat> as well. And Ivy's been about as good as I thought she was going to be. Where, like, she, she's solid, but she's not, like, the unit you're going for. Like, to choose, you know, essentially. Like, mm -hmm. um, Hodent is cool, and it's, like, a, a new nice effect. But Marth really is the one that uses it the best by far. Yeah. And I think the fact that Ivy is middling speed, and she doesn't have, like, offensive no follow-up in her weapon definitely hurts a little bit right like you really want desperation four on her as well <laughs> like you want a way to make sure she gets all of her attacks in before she gets hit back because she's typically gonna die um it's what so. i have on her and I, desperation four i think is her best b skill like it, yeah. it's it's very very good on her um exactly i 
I thought this banner was like I feel like this banner is the the way banner should be. Mm. Um, I, it, there were lots of interesting things and different ways that you could use each of these units. There were nothing. There was nothing that really broke the meta, but there was there was enough unique design that it was very interesting. Um, I mean, Ivy as a fodder factory is kind of amazing with yes. that soaring guidance, uh, yes. Uh, yes. a tune skill. Um, really liked that. Uh, we talked about Hortensia being an amazing support. Uh, Rosado is this year's uh, Spring Maria. Spring Maria. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, I mean, always you have a place for that unit and they just come out of nowhere, which means the fans of Rosado will have a place to use her and, you know, surprise other people. So I, I thought it was a really good banner. Yeah, yeah Rosado. I yeah, I, I really like the banner as well. Like Rosada, Rosado, he has a really good design. Wyvern Rift is a really, really interesting skill yes. that, yes. like, I didn't expect them to have the Diamant effect, that's what I'm going to call it, mm-hmm. onto an inheritable, like, skill that, like, that soon. I thought that was going to be, like, something relegated to perfs for a while, and then maybe down the line we get it in an inheritable. No, it's just right here, and it's for Wyvern, and he has it, and it's amazing. Yeah. It, to be fair, though, I think, like, it's still very conditional, right? Because it has like right, the right. conditions on that skill are pretty, like niche. I guess is the mm-hmm. best way to put it. And so I, I'm glad to see this first step, but I think that soon the next step for Omni Tanks is giving out that effect. Because essentially what we'll be doing is going back to year two meta, where like Legendary Hector could actually turn off doubles, right? <laughs> like yeah. we've, we've completely just went completely off the rails since then. I think we might be going back to there, which will be interesting. And I'm just saying, hey. If you want to give Brave Felix that effect and like, you know, flat damage reduction with <laughs> other stuff, I won't complain. Yeah. Are there any good users of Wyvern Rift right now? Or are the like the conditions too restrictive for that at the current moment? Uh Rosado, Spring Mar- Maria, Jill, and I think there's one other person I'm forgetting, and someone's gonna yell at me in the comments. I can't remember who it was. Uh, but yeah, like those three are very, very, very good users of it. Yeah, I, it would be interesting to see like how that effect like continues in the future. Um, like wrapping it back around to Ivy, I really do like the design of her um, unit wise, like having someone be reliant on potent and making that like their thing to be able to like get pseudo doubles is just really, really interesting as like a design concept for a unit. Um, she still has her signature warping, but I think I do agree that, like, the new king is not as, like, powerful. Honestly, like, for me, I fear the new king of Summer Ivy more than regular Ivy, because, like, Summer Ivy has a conditional mm. brave, which right. is a lot more scary for me and my specific teams because of <laughs> Valdez Lucina <laughs> needs, literally needs miracle in order to survive braves, like, literally any brave. Um, but... Yeah, like, I still really, really like the design. And, yeah, Soaring Echo is definitely an interesting attune skill to introduce on her as an attune unit. Mm-hmm. I, I do think eventually, like, right now we're very much in, like, a cav meta when it comes to summer duels, at least. Mm-hmm. But I do think there's going to be a point where, like, they're like, hey, here's a new flyer unit we need to sell. And, like, we're going to shift right back into flyers. And at that point, people who pulled Ivy and, like, Hortensia and can hand out that Soaring Guidance and Snap are going to be in a very happy place. Like, they're going to, like, oh, my gosh, my investment paid off. That's all I'm at least predicting. You know, obviously, I don't work at IS. I can't exactly tell you, but <laughs> if it does happen, then I do work at IS. <laughs> <laughs> See, Oblivion isn't actually a whale. These are all promotional orbs that he gets for testing. <laughs> and DTM is the whale. So that that's, what? yeah. <laughs> This is the hidden lore of Fae tubers. Yeah, I have a secret account called ATM. That is my whale account. And <laughs> <laughs> I do all my whaling there. Did you just come everything. up with that now, or is that somebody someone, someone, someone else said, said that you? I think uh, Giratina Light said that in a chat, and I was like, <laughs> I'm immediately stealing that. <laughs> That's that is so actually such a good. It's so good. It is. Yes, shout outs to Giratina for that. Like, yeah, it's amazing. Um, 
But yeah, I, I think I do agree. Like right now, Soaring Echo isn't exactly in the greatest of spots, but if we ever move away from a calf meta, like you can definitely find some uses. I don't think it'll be like as a big upgrade as just getting like Guidance 4 for the first time was because I think like the only other C option that would really be significant in terms of like the meta would be like Snap. Um, you can mm -hmm. put Deadly Miasma, but like you don't really need to, and you probably wouldn't want to summon Soaring Echo just to put Deadly Miasma in. Um, but yeah, it will be interesting to see if Soaring Echo, if we get back into like a calf or like a Catria Ball meta, um, what that can do. Yeah, we, I think it's going to be pretty interesting to have like Warping and Extra Movement is like a really strong combo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we also have the Flash special, the legendary Flash special for healers <laughs> now. Uh, oh my god, why didn't you make that a thing? <laughs> ATM, I, mean, I know it was you. Evil DTM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm secretly dev to giving IS all the evil ideas. Yeah. I figured out where that was from. Like, it was in, like, when I was talking about, like, the CYL tier list, I was like, you know what Brave Veronica needs? Brave Veronica needs a Flash special. Oh and, my god. <laughs> hey, she has it now, and you can put it on your Brave Veronicas or other healers that you appreciate. And... <laughs> I don't know, I like it. Like, I don't think Flash Special would, like, break the game or anything. I I think it's a nice addition for healers. I, I think at this point, not, because there's, like, there's so many sweep effects in the meta right now. Like, NCD is such a big, like, necessity that yeah. you're going to run into it more often, I guess is the best mm -hmm. way to put it. So, like, especially with Byleth, you know, existing, so. Right. Yeah, Byleth sort of shuts that uh, yeah. sweep stuff down pretty well. Yeah. But yeah, like very, very cool banner. Honestly, I I love all the bits of this banner. Like again, Ivy, pretty good and very interesting nuke. Rosado with the very interesting skills and design. Hortensia being a very good Omni Tank support. And just after this banner, I believe, we did get another Omni Tank that we've mentioned before. And it was Legendary Male Alir, which Female Alir, but better, basically. Essentially, yeah. Which is kind of sad because it hasn't. Even, well, it was like six months, maybe. I think. That's, that's like yeah, a yeah, fast turnover. Six months, yeah. But, she, uh, he doesn't have the support that female Alir <laughs> has, um, but yeah. like the tank. At least when it comes to his role as an Omni tank, I do believe like everything is there. Besides, like I, trading Dragon Blast for like the inheritable dragon swirl of course right i i think we can all agree like he, he's top two omni tank like that that's mm -hmm. easily I, I don't think that's much of a debate uh, he's very right. good and miracle is very very good in the world of burn damage you know yeah i think, right. I think the only thing that holds him back a little bit is that the miracle condition is like pretty strict actually yeah um, it kind of makes it so that you really want to run bulwark on him which means you're not running ncd but like mm. that's pretty much it like other than that he's like pretty perfect but, like he's, he's he's really strong like he's a very yeah. very good user i mean what do you expect you take one of the best iron takes in the game and make him better like you know? <laughs> yeah I, probably I have we'll seen I, i've seen some things and this is i hadn't thought about this but i I, he will probably age quicker than most units. And mm. I, the, the thing mm. I said that really brought it home is he's reliant on two stats. And you need uh, both uh, speed and res. Right. And that's true. that that gets harder for stacking purposes. So, right. Um, that's definitely true. But I mean, I mean every he, unit ages in phase. So th that's, that's coming more than you like tanks, it or not. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tanks and nukes are like, they age so quick. Like, supports are really where it's at, to be honest. Like, mm hmm. The other thing, though, is, like, the introduction of that dragon special is so cool. Especially because, like, now dragons are in a really cool place where they have access to Scow, but they also have access to the new Guard Echo, possibly, yep. and then also this dragon special. So they actually, like, on an inheritable level, they have almost all the tools that they need. Like, the only thing that I think they're missing is, like, NCD, which some can run still. So, like, it's it's really nice for it to be a dragon, like, user right now. Yeah, this is, like, the beginnings of, like, potentially a dragon's renaissance like we've had a dragon's renaissance before but like mm -hmm. now with actually a dragon special it isn't gale force which i'm a little bit sad about but like yeah <laughs> it, <laughs> one day we'll get it and dinian will become a three action dancer you'll see oh my god yes please 
That would be so cool. Yeah, like not even Ninian. Like all the Liliths would just be so improved with a Dragon Gale oh, yeah. Force. I'm going to keep hammering this point home. Like we need a Dragon Gale Force.、Um, <laughs> I, let's talk about Naga. Naga gets a lot better if she suddenly has dry,、uh, has a Gale Force. I mean, seriously. Oh, okay. I see what you're. I was like, Naga. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I I see see yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. As a mythic right now, she is just not great. And give her Gale、no. Force, and suddenly she is a very good unit. Definitely, it's a lot better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah.、Um, obviously, like, still not the best, especially for Gale Force. You probably want like Sather,、uh, Plumeria, and probably either Ratatoskr or、uh, Regan.、Um, but you, it can definitely be, work in a pinch for sure. I mean, yeah, just definitely becomes usable, which is pretty much what you want for your mythic to be to、yep. be usable and offer some support, which is、mm-hmm. it's good support. So that, that's very、yeah. nice. I, I mean, from our mythics, we want versatility, right? We want them、yes. to be able to fill a lot of different roles, and maybe this is the only role she can fill, but <laughs> at least it's one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Naga!、Oh, I, I swear, poor like Naga. So many dragon mythics are just like so bad. Like it's. Is there a good dragon <laughs> mythic? I'm trying to remember.、Uh, oh my gosh! So I, I read Seros at B, and KCB was like not happy <laughs> with me. And then I was like, you know, friends don't lie to each other. And he's like, do you forget the Among Us stream already? And I was like, damn, he got me. <laughs> Honestly, when you told me that, I was, I was surprised because I thought like B was being very generous. I would have put in her at like C or like. Maybe even worse because I still don't think she's good, like at all. Like I, I mean, for me, Saros is like the Altina support in like SD, and I was like, ooh, that's a good choice for Altina. Like, so like I was kind of high on it, but yeah, I mean,、um, I, in in answer to your question, Lumera is actually pretty good. Oh, right, oh, Lumera, yeah, Lumera. Lumera. Yeah. Right, right, right. I forgot she、yeah. existed. The the, <laughs>、yeah. the unit who stole the spot from Athos. Yeah, never forget. <laughs> <laughs> Never forgive, never forget. Except you just did. Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess、oh, Lumera、man. is the one exception for now. But、um, yeah, obviously, like she had her work cut out for her、um, uh-huh. to be able to do that. We do have the spring banner as well. I believe this is the final banner that.、Uh, I sort of missed、um, with like <laughs> Chloe, Fram, Sylvain, and、uh, some other unit. I forget. Mirabilis. Oh yes, Mirab. Oh, don't show this to pretty. She will attack me for forgetting Mirabilis.、Um, but yes,、uh, I think the main star of the show. I think we can all agree is probably Chloe. I haven't seen a lot of discussions on Fram, Sylvain, or Mirabilis, although. Apparently, Mirabilis was used in、um, Summer's Duels R by I think Super Polka Gal to reach rank one, which was really interesting.、Um, Mirabilis actually might be the best unit on the banner, like actually. Oh, like I think she might be better than Chloe. <laughs> Remind me, what's kind of funny? What does Mirabilis do again? So she has like the like three row three calm thing, but she applies guard,、mm. and then she also debuffs stats, and then her dance gives. Bonus doubler and attack to the unit you dance, and then panic and attack minus six on、uh, the nearest foe, and it all foes within five spaces. Oh dang, that is actually really really good.、Mm-hmm. So like,、uh, there's a bit a thing going on where like when you're using an Omni tank who doesn't need speed, like Altina,、mm-hmm. uh, you're using <laughs> Ashnard because Ashnard actually provides a lot of support in like a、right. global range, or not global, but like a, a big wide range. And Morales、mm-hmm. can kind of do the exact same thing, but be a dancer. And so, you know, if you could bring a dancer, typically it'd be better than than Ashnard in that situation. And so she actually fits pretty well into Omni Tank teams.、Uh, I haven't tested it myself because I didn't really pull on that banner, but I've been watching videos of it, and it's it's not it's pretty good. Like it's pretty solid. I mean, again, like it did it did help a team get reach rank one. So like, there's <laughs> obviously like a lot of merits to that. Like, right? It's sort of funny because like we saw like pretty much like. Four fifths of like people running like all these cab teams, and then there's <laughs>、yeah. like the subset of just like people running full on Omni tanks with like Alir because he's bonus, and then like Hortensia 
on occasion, Mirabilis, like, all these supports, and it's just really interesting that Mirabilis, like, fits into that really, really well. Yeah. And as a demote, too, which is really nice. Mm-hmm, right. A demote being the best unit on the banner. I mean, the, the thing is with Chloe is, like, she is obviously a very powerful unit, and she has a lot of things going for her. I just mm -hmm. think it's kind of like with Sheeta, where she's just not in the best spot right now, right? Like, right. the fact that Murr exists really hampers charge. And so as insane as charge is, if everybody's using Murr, it doesn't have as much value. And so you typically would just want a different unit instead of Chloe if the charge isn't activating. Um, now, obviously, if something changes, then I think her value like skyrockets because we've seen a powerful charge can be. It's like completely broken. So we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. But like on paper, she's a ridiculous unit. I, I like her a lot. I've been playing with her. I, I got her on a free summon, so I, I wasn't going to nice. summon on the banner at nice. all. And she popped up. Oh, absolutely love that. Um, but I, I, I do have to say, so on this banner, I, I ranked Mirabilis kind of low. And I don't know what it was about this banner, but it put me in a bad mood. I, that generally doesn't happen <laughs> with me. I, I, and so I, I had I had her in the rankings. And I, I, I at the last minute, I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. There's so many dancers. I'm going to bump her down one. And I really shouldn't have. But man, my comments got lit up. <laughs> <laughs> just, how could you hate on Marvelous? Marvelous? No. Oh, my God. I'm like, guys, I'm sorry. I, I just, you know, it was, it was an off moment. Please forgive me. Feel it. No, you, <laughs> that was you come. You committed the sin of desecrating our goddess. Like, you cannot yell out the <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all human. We make mistakes. <laughs> I did that with the FE1 banner. I was literally at the ending of Final Fantasy VII. I had to stop, put it aside, and record the banner video. And I was in a bad mood during that video. I was just like, mm, okay, <laughs> let's get through this. But, uh... I, I mean, we already talked about that, but yeah, that's it happens, right? Everybody has uh, has off and on moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, like on Chloe herself, like I think I do agree that like if it wasn't for Mer, like she would be like a lot stronger um, because yeah. like one of the things Chloe can do that Legendary Hanoka cannot is that her she can charge like anyone, not just flyers, and so like theoretically you can have an armor in and be able to move with like all your flyer teams but again like right now the meta is not exactly favorable to that since it's all calves plus mer um but like if that ever changes i do think we could see a resurgence of chloe if i had the resources i want to build a an armor line so badly <laughs> i just i would love that I, I I'll have to look at it again. I just, I don't have any ranged armor armors built up, and there are not that many of them. No, but no, I, yeah. I feel like the right person would just make the most hilarious defense we have ever seen. <laughs> That's if if you're out there and you have a ton of ranged armors built up, you you need to do this, and you need to send me a video of how it works because th this, like, this is my dream. They have all the three houses armor bows like built up. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have Winter Felix, Winter Annette, yeah, nope. Winter Ignatz. <laughs> yeah, you know. What are you talking about? Yeah, nope. the best alt in the game. Like, There's only one wise. Felix in the game, so we're waiting until <laughs> August. It's going to be great. It's the second one. Yeah, the we only Last year, last year we got one five star exclusive ranged armor. That's it. Is is to cool. it? That was. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. That was all Don't tell we got. Gal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who? Honestly, I just know Takumi as like AS Farsay fodder or something. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> or Savvy 4 fodder, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, I forgot what we were talking about. Um, uh, oh, like yeah. Sylvain and Fram, I think, are the only two we haven't talked about yet. Right. I mean, Sylvain is interesting with, like, the rally extra action thing, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's something we ha haven't seen before, like, we had seen before, and the like, like, and I don't think his support is that interesting, I believe. Yeah. I mean, he he's a good unit, like, he's legitimately yeah, a good unit, it's is. just that, it's just that he's not at the tier, he's not at the highest tier, right? Like, he's, like, one below, right? He, he's not at the level I'd put, like, Tiara. Or like Winter Dimitri, mm -hmm. or like 
you know, any of those, or Brave Crom, right? Brave Crom's really up there. Um, <laughs> like, he just doesn't have, like, that one thing that makes him, like, insane, which is, like, the extra movement or something like that. So, like, he can hit really hard when you could get him in there. It's just, like, would you want to run him over one of these other units with these cool gimmicks? And it's, like, right. eh, not really. And, and it's, a, it's an archetype that you don't need that many of. Right, exactly. That's the yes. other thing. It's exactly. not like ranged nukes. You need, you usually need quite a few ranged nukes. I mean, it's kind of like Summer Shez, right? Like, Summer Shez is a very strong melee nuke, but no one really uses her mm-hmm. because, like, she doesn't have four movement or she doesn't have some kind of weird gimmick. So, like, right. yeah. It's like, like okay, nuking's great, not, but... Yeah, there's yeah. just <laughs> not a lot of places to use, like, melee calves unless you're, mm-hmm. like, like special, like you mentioned. And so, like... Or you can do Gale Force. Or you can do Gale Force. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> He can definitely Gale Force. He can, that's something he can do. So, like, I mean, if you're a Sylvain fan, don't be sad. He's a very good unit. You can make him work yes. in a lot of places. It's just, you know, like, if your top tier meta is not the easiest place to get into. And he, the thing he did, couldn't use with Gale, or the thing he had trouble with Gale Force, I believe, is that he had healing. I don't remember. Probably, I though. Don't Everybody has healing either. for no reason. <laughs> I don't know why. Yep. Yeah. And then IS just ruins perfectly good Gale Force things by adding healing. Like, I was still mad about <laughs> yeah. Attack Speed Wild, which, by the way, you definitely <laughs> want on your Fallen Data Guard Hollow Forms. Just FYI. Um, but yeah, like, why? <laughs> um, when it comes to Fram, do you guys have any experience with her? I haven't seen her. I haven't used her because I don't have her. So I, I honestly have no real take on her other than what like I saw on paper, essentially. I mean, I, you know me, I haven't summoned, like, I barely summoned, so, okay, yeah. Well, put ATM on the call, I'll ask. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, the, the problem is supports are another, like, a, any sort of supports have just gotten ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And so it takes just a ton to be a good support. And, and this unit's kind of trying to be a melee frontliner slash support. Yeah. And that's that's another tough archetype right now. Yeah, it definitely right. it doesn't work that well. Like it's usually you want like nuke support or something like that. Like not Yeah. Take support unless you're just rough. Unless you're Lumera. And uh, the the fact that you, she is a mythic and so it's it's easy to mm-hmm. slot her in is it makes her a little different. Yeah. I, I I believe like Fram support is just giving like damage reduction, I believe. And a lot. A lot of damage. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of damage, damage reduction, right? Yeah, yeah. Um and like I think like uh, tempo I believe or is that only for herself? I think so. I can't remember. Yeah, so no, I it's think just that's only for herself. It's, yeah, yeah, that's only for herself. Yeah, reading this. Um, and like damage reduction is nice, but like I feel like these days we have a lot of ways to like mitigate or bypass damage reduction. Um, yeah. And well, if especially you, if you, you don't have piercing, you don't exist, and that that's in any archetype. <laughs> like that's True. literally True. you have to have piercing. Right. Like the most demanding effect right now, which is kind of crazy that we've gotten to that point. Yeah. Yeah. But like if like if you compare this to like someone like uh um I guess what we just talked about with Mirabilis or even Hortensia, like they provide support outside of just damage reduction. Like Hortensia provides Kanto, um, Discord, Panic, debuffs, buffs, like her C does a lot. Penalty neutralization. Um, run your Hortensia to cancel the other Hortensia. Um, but yeah, like... Hortensia fights. <laughs> this is the path for Oblivion to get a plus 10 Hortensia. Oh, I'm calling God. it right Never. now. I don't need to, there's no reason to plus 10 her. I have one copy that's good enough. <laughs> you can tell how smug I am right now. But anyways... Oh. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like Fram, unfortunately, like I don't think like does. Can, can we have a member goal for Oblivion that that has him yes. cosplaying Hortensia? Yes, thousand members, <laughs> one thousand members in one month, and I'll do it. <laughs> All right. Who wants to drop five thousand dollars on it? I'll do it. Let's go. <laughs> if you ever get like, I don't know, like win the lotto, <laughs> win the lottery, yeah, <laughs> we'll fund it. There we go. I completely forgot what I was saying. But yeah, oh yeah, uh, I don't. I don't think Fram does enough, basically, as a support. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. 
Yeah, damage her. Oh, go ahead. I, I was kind of surprised, like, we didn't get her brother, too. Like, what's, what was up with that? Plan? Like, like, yeah. Yeah. Split up all the twins this month. Like, no twins. Only one. You only get the one we like. That's it. <laughs> I know. So sad. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like they could have replaced... I, who could they replace? They could probably could replace, like, either Mira. Actually, no, not Mira, because that's with, uh, um... Linhart. Linhart, yes. Yeah. So maybe Sylvain, I guess? That would, that would yeah. make all the Sylvain fans angry. But I don't know. I'm a Sylvain fan, but I don't want him in an Easter outfit, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. I, yeah. Doesn't Easter outfit kind of fit with him, though? I mean, it, it, it's... I think it sort of does, it, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I would rather him have like a, like a bridal Sylvain. I think that would have been funnier. <laughs> like he's like a, like wedding crasher Sylvain. <laughs> Dang. Now I'm sad that didn't happen. That would have been so good. I would, that's what I would have been. been. That would have been great. <laughs> He'll be like the one person that like go crashes in and be like, I object to this marriage or something. Like I can imagine it just now. <laughs> he has like a Kool-Aid man effect. Like there's a wall to break through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think we can all agree that just damage reduction is not exactly enough, especially in this era of a lot of ways to pierce it with burn damage and everything. Um, but who knows? Maybe there will be a future thing that can mitigate that. Maybe this upcoming emblem ring, potentially? We do oh, have man. an emblem coming up soon. And I just want to hear, what are you speculating right now in general? I, I think the one thing is, like, I'm pretty sure it's green, right? Like, I'm, I, I, the only chance is it's green or red. Those are the only two real options, mm-hmm. I think. And I I'm believe so, yes. it will be green, because green has the newest, like, legendary mythic on it, which is Kala. Yeah. I, I think you're so, right. So, the thing is, like, who can be green, right? Like, out of, because I'm guessing they're going to stay to, like, the original emblems, I would imagine. I don't think they'll go to the DLC quite yet, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like Hector or something like that. But out of the original emblems, like it's like green could be like Ike, Lynn, maybe Leaf. Like who else is there really to do? I don't, that could be green. Yeah. I think that's it. Like green has Camilla and Sather, which is a really, really good share. Mm-hmm. Like it's an insane yes. share. Yes, um, yes. So that's Green Dream 2.0 right there. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be pulling a lot of green this month. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness it's green and not like colorless or something. Oh, I know, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but oh. yeah, like when I think green, I just think Brave Ike. And so like I think oh. we might be getting Emblem Ike with like some sort of defensive skill or effect. I, I really don't want that. <laughs> I'm going to be... Like, <laughs> There's like a love and hate in there. There's, I, I want like Emblem Ike to be good, obviously, and I want his ring to be really good because that's the one I'm going to plus 10. So like, obviously I want that. But at the same time, just getting another Brave Ike, like another version of Brave Ike is kind of like boring to me. I really, that's the problem with Emblems though, right? Because we kind of know what they're going to be to an extent. And I really want like a ranged Ike. I, that's what I really, really want. I want like a, a nuke ranged Ike with some support effects. Like that'd be so cool. But the chances of that are pretty much zero, so... Also, I'm really afraid because a hero rises is gonna hurt my wallet. But if there's an emblem I got the end of the month, my wallet's gonna be like ultra dead. <laughs> <laughs> Moving beyond Ice is, like, pity really targeting city. me. You, yeah. you, know yeah. would help, you know what would help your wallet? Uh huh. A member goal to dress up as Hortensia. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna set it. I'm gonna set it as a thousand <laughs> members. Let's let's see if anyone get that. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. my god. <laughs> um, yeah. I, Do you have anything? I, 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 you kind of feel it, right? You you feel it that oh. they're trying to bring oh. back enemy phase. And so yes. I'm, I'm really like Hector or Ike. I don't know that they're going to stick to the DLC. Like, I, I don't know that they care. So I, I think true. one of those two. And when was the last time we got a Hector? Has it has it been a while? Last year. Last year, I believe. Oh, that's right. Um, And when that's was the last time we got Ike? Two years. Oh. And it was, was the last yeah. one young Ike, I believe? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm nervous. That's why I'm really <laughs> nervous. Because I'm like, it's it's about time he shows up, which is like, IS has hit me every single month. So like, this is this month? No, they got me with Leon this month. Like, they've just been hitting, oh my god, stop IS, please. <laughs> oh. They And the thing is, you're the one who predicted before the emblems that around this time, we were mm-hmm. going to be getting a new Ike. I, I think you predicted yeah. a little later than this, but this is like by a month yeah. or two, but it's, mm-hmm. it just, it, it feels about right for Ike. I'm so scared. 
<laughs> so the way I see it, like they could technically do a red emblem here. So like to me, there's two options, right? Like you either you either add the band aid now and try to get the enemy saves like or like the enemy phase back into the place, or you go like even more degenerate for one more month to really push in the need for the band aid, right? So like you put in Sigurd, and Sigurd gives extra movement and Kanto, and we're back into ultra mobility meta in every single game mode. Like, and then at that point, you're like, I'm desperate. Please give me anything to fix this. And that's when they put in the fix next month. I like that. The, I guess the question is, like, would that fix be on a normal banner or would they do it on an emblem? Oh, um, they'd do an emblem or something. Like, they'd, they'd have to do, like, on an emblem or a mythic or something expensive, right? Like they, right. they want all our money. And so, like, that comes to the question, like, how often are these emblems going to mm. run? Because. Right, right. Like, this is only two months from the previous one, but, like, the previous one had an emblem and a mythic. So is it going to be, like... Right. Is it going to, like, be an emblem, mythic, emblem, legendary? Or is it going to be, like, emblem, mythic, legendary, emblem, mythic, legendary? Like, we don't know until, like, the next rotation. Mm -hmm. That's so, that's my guess right now. But, I mean, as as you stated, we have nothing to base that on. So... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, right. I, I think that would be a good pace, though. I, I would enjoy that. Every three months? Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, mythic legendary emblem, yeah, yeah, going like that. Yeah, I think that's probably the safest. But knowing IS, like maybe they have a bad fiscal quarter and they're like, hey, throw an emblem <laughs> there right now. <laughs> throw, throw two emblems. <laughs> right, throw, throw all the emblems. I think they'll keep it to three months, mainly because like it gives them a lot of like pacing for, mm. and. You don't have to be too creative on like emblems outside of like the 20 that we have because that will last you for like five years basically with the 20 that we have yeah. um but yeah it will be interesting to see for sure um if it is ike uh what sort of effects would you either want to see or do you predict you will see <laughs> well like in in engage ike is like the tinkering essentially like he just chills and like takes the mm -hmm. hits and then create ethers and stuff I'm assuming it'll be defensive effects. Now, like, how far do they go with that, right? That's the real question. They could go really, really far, and they could go for, like, the anti-burn damage, which would make him immediately very, like, one of the most valuable things you could have on your account, essentially. They could go for, like, NCD, which makes him pretty valuable for your account. Uh, or they can go, like, flat DR, too, which is also just, you know, like, any of those effects would be really, really strong and good mm -hmm. to have. Um, he also had Vantage in, in Engage, too, so... We, maybe they make it so you have a vantage ring which is scary so i just think no matter what it's going to be like either really good or scary <laughs> so i'm like i'm a little bit horrified i i could be wrong i i really feel like they believe that healing is the anti-burn damage i and i i, I recognize oh. that it's it's a that's not very good like that's not a, right <laughs> that's, that's not a good answer <laughs> But, but I, I, I believe that they that's what they think. Um, this this goes back, I, I think, way back when there's a big meme on how IS never actually plays their own game. <laughs> so I, there, yeah. there are moments like this where I'm like, yeah, that, that's, that might be the case. Um, I would be I would be interested to see if he just gave like flat DR. Right. That would I think that would be something that could be very powerful that is realistic that they could give out. That uh, yeah. I, I, I think that would be a fun thing to have. I, mean, I could see them doing like flat DR and healing, and like that would be that would be solid. You know what I mean? Do you think like, they're I gonna really, go to two effects? I wouldn't be surprised. Like if it's like like ten percent flat DR and like seven healing, like that would be not bad. Uh, the thing is, like it has to be like Mars is like a really interesting one because it's like a pure passive, but they could also make it so like it activates on specials, right? Right. Which is that way they can add more to it without. Um, without it being absurdly powerful, right? So that's an option as yeah. well. So I, it's really interesting what they can do here, but yeah. will they do something interesting or will they just do something boring is like the real question. And I don't know if, how much faith I have in them. It's, you it's tough because it's such a good design mechanic and I, right. I am, I'm worried they're not going to do well with it. <laughs> <laughs> Your mention right, of right. it healing, like made me think like, maybe it just gives you like life unending. Because like part oh, of God. Mars thing is that you, or not Mars Ike's thing is that you like you know tank up everything and then when you do your big hit you heal up right, right. so like right. maybe you can life unending is like phase version of that and yeah 
another mechanic they haven't done yet so that there's no precedent for it but like mm -hmm. i can see them doing this as like temporary hp like that i'm a little bit afraid of but that would also counter burn damage pretty strong right like if it's like hey you know at start of turn grant 20 bonus hp or whatever and that would pretty much put burn damage back into its place essentially so that's just also something but i don't know they'd go that way i'm imagining a brand new player and i recognize that it's already <laughs> just absolutely <laughs> bonkers to understand yeah but trying yep. to figure out like wait my hp went up wait it then went away what just happened and oh yeah I, oh no. my god uh, just yeah. oh this game is so complicated it is I, it's I, it's so complex I think if they were to implement that big HP, they would probably like modify the burn damage damage number in the bow forecast and not have like the pseudo HP thing or anything like that. That's how I imagine that. Like, burn that. DR. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like I could have that. He could have like reduces burn damage by half or something, which would be really strong. Or like Is it have DR, a cap flat at, DR like, or burn DR. <laughs> <laughs> you need all of them. You want all of them. I or you can have there's, it like capped at like twenty five percent of your health or something like that. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that is another way you can do it. Something so. else they could do because like with Sheeta, right? They really went like the healing route, like you said, right? Like she gets the fourteen heal per hit or whatever. Like if they're a cav or armor. Yeah. Um, something they could do, which would be interesting, is they could do like an ice mirror effect, but instead of it being where you reflect damage, it heals you after combat. And so you like, oh, I reduced oh. my damage by this amount. Then after combat, I heal this amount. And that would allow burn damage between combat to not be as big of a deal. So I think that, I mean, that these are all really too interesting. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> They're too interesting of ideas for IS, but maybe, who knows? <laughs> I actually really like that as a design aspect. That would be really cool to see. Um, we have gotten like, quote unquote, soul tanks somewhat <laughs> before. And that would just right. be like the next iteration of that, which I think would be really cool to bring back. And if it's I too, right? Because like great ether in engage, that's how it works, right? It deals mm. the damage to everybody, then it heals you afterwards. Right. So it would be kind of thematic. But uh, yeah. I, once again, I don't know what they'll do. Watch all of our speculations on Ike. Like we have here, oh, and totally. it's just like someone different. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I, like it, they're gonna put Tiki or something like that, and then make me very angry. But actually, kind of happy because <laughs> I don't spend orbs, so maybe, <laughs> maybe that's fine. I uh, Tiki was so busted, though. I I well, don't even true. know what they're gonna do with her. Like that's they could they could do something like adds adaptive damage, and I would be so angry with that. Or, or they could uh, the, the whole turning yourself into a dragon was so neat mm -hmm. so didn't I, she I have miracle in engage or am i tripping i i don't remember I'd, I'd have to go back and look but i thought she could like give out miracle or something like that i think there was like some sort of miracle effect but i don't remember oh, i yeah, saw yeah i saw tiki's tiki. map and i was like i'll do this later <laughs> like that map was so <laughs> difficult in the beginning. Yeah. I did it immediately when it showed up, and it was mm -hmm. so difficult. It was never ending reinforcements. So I was just like, stop. Well, it's actually better if you do them early because it scales right. with your, uh, it, mm -hmm. yeah, it scales yeah. with the level. Right, right. Yeah. yeah she she yeah. did give out blood. She did give out miracle. Okay, maybe uh, that will be the life unending ring then. Yeah. So I mean, that would be really bad on a Lear, but that'd be really good on Tina. So I'll take it. <laughs> So, so my dream of seeing Sharena turn into a flying dragon probably isn't going to happen. <laughs> I mean, maybe it does both. Maybe it does both. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I guess we'll have nothing to do but wait and see. Who knows? It could be something out of the ordinary. Like, maybe not even green, but like red. We have like candles like Sigrid, right. as mentioned. Maybe they... Celica. Celica, yep. Maybe they don't want to make money and put it on like blue or colorless or something. Oh, well, um, well, please don't. No, please, there's no oh. way. Blue is so bad. Blue is going to be, okay, sorry, Satachi, but it's going to be female pilot, uh, Mycin, and then a new emblem. Oh, that would be the most disgusting yeah, shit ever. Please don't do that to us. No, they wouldn't do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. It, it's green or red, and most most likely it's green. Most right, likely, right. yeah. Um. <laughs> But yeah, like I guess we will have nothing to do but to wait and see. Um, probably be around a week or so after this video comes out when the trailer releases. And yeah, I guess um, we've been talking for about an hour and a half. Is there anything else you want to add before we end it off for today? 
uh, it's been an interesting month of, of Fey. Like, they've been doing a lot of stuff, so interested to see where this goes. I think Emblem Rings are one of the most cool mechanics they've added, and I love how much it can help everybody. So I'm hoping this mm -hmm. one follows that trend and doesn't go like crazy power creep after one ring. So let's pray to Naga. Yeah, I we should have... I think we should have a Fey channel next time we we talk, and maybe a little bit after. Awesome. So it yeah. will yeah. it it should be coming. We should be getting a summer Fey channel as well. So, yep. or, sorry, spring yeah. in that in that realm. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. We'll have to see like once the calendar releases, like how that like works out. But um, who knows? I guess again, we have to wait and see. Who knows what this emblem ring can be? Hopefully, it'll be something cool, like. I really love the Marth Ring, so hopefully they knock it out of the park with this one as well. Um, but yeah, again, so glad to be back. So glad to be discussing Faye with you two. It's always a blast. And um, again, you're welcome for the Divine Codes and A Hero Rises. Like, <laughs> I'm taking sole if it, credit of that. If it sounded like we were rambling a bit, like we haven't really been able to talk to DTM for, for yes. like a couple of weeks. So, we're, all, we're all excited. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, like I've been like Ghost Clyde besides like some messages on Discord. Like <laughs> I've just been focused on vacationing. And even now, right now, like I'm still like a little bit jet lagged. And so, um, yep. yeah, if you see that this is a bit jambled, well, now you know why, but don't worry, that's part of the charm. Right, folks? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, hope you all enjoyed uh, the podcast. I'll do a little spiel here. If you did enjoy it, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, not only to my channel, but to Oblivion's and Joel's channel as well. The link to that will be in the description down below. And yeah, hope you all have an amazing rest of the day. And see you all next time. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.